Hello. Bless you this morning. This is Pastor Phil. I want to talk to you about walking in the light of the Lord. And I got three places that I want to go in Scripture uh, for us to see. First John chapter 1, uh, verse 6 through 10. And then we'll uh, see how we do with the other two pieces. The light of God is something that uh, he has always used in my life. He went with me one time to uh, Russia, and he said he was going to go as a bright morning star, and I've never forgotten that. And he did some amazing things on that trip. Uh, God wants to challenge us, I think, and in this time of uh, so much going on in the world around us, uh, he, wants, he wants to give us uh, a place that we can walk where nothing can touch us and nothing can have us except his light. So, First uh, John uh, chapter 1, verse 6, I want to start reading there and go to verse 10. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and we do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with the other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Verse 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have no sins, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So if the word is, is in us properly, uh, the challenge of our life is to, uh, in verse 7, walk in the light as he is in the light. And he has so much light, so much visibility uh, about him, so much illumination about him, so much majesty about him, uh, that he wears it like a, like a garment. And uh, so that's our challenge, to put on Christ and to wear him like he's a garment, okay? And then the second place I wanted you to go uh, is in Matthew chapter 5, and I want to start with verse 13 and go to 16. Uh, if we, uh, uh, Matthew 5, 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor or flavor, wherewith shall we be salted? It is therefore, it is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast down and to be trodden under foot of men. So I think we need to remember that saying, good for nothing. Because uh, we don't want to be good for nothing. We want to be the salt of the earth. And that's not really where I'm going, but I wanted you to get that phrase, good for nothing. Now verse 14, uh, 514 of Matthew. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So we're, we're the light of the world. We're not good for nothing. We're good for something as long as we show that light. Verse 15, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. That would be good for nothing. But what the Lord is saying, neither, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but we put it on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in the house. So everybody in the house can draw from the light that's in you. Uh, you can get them saved. You can get them filled with the Holy Spirit. You can make them to walk in the proper places where they need to walk. Uh, uh, sometimes people come in your house. There was a man uh, in my yard yesterday. He didn't come in my house, but he was in my vehicle, and he was in my, my yard. And I talked to him, and I told him, I said, Psalm 91, verse 10, uh, no plague should come nigh my dwelling. And I told him a couple other things that the, the Lord would, would supply. You know, to take care of him and to take care of us. So, uh, see even verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. That would be good for nothing. Uh, verse 14. Uh, we're the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. If we're hiding, that would be good for nothing. 
So we want it to be good for something. We want people to see the light that's in us. So we walk in the light as he is in the light. Then verse 16, here's what Jesus says about the light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And the man that I was talking to yesterday, as soon as I shared two or three scriptures with him, he said, Amen, Amen, Amen. He says, that's, that's what we're using too. So we, we found fellowship, we found agreement in the Word of God. All right? So uh, how do you know when the light is shining? How do you know when your light is shining? Well, he tells you in verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Okay, take some time with these scriptures now. And then the third place I want you to go is in Isaiah chapter 60. And verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Now this is the future glory of Israel. And not a lot of people talk about that. But this is not only for our glory, but this is the glory that Israel is going to see. This is the light that, that Israel is going to see in us. And, and we're going to make them to be ashamed. We're going to make them to be jealous of us. Okay? Because God has taken away our shame and brought this light and taken us out of the darkness and brought this light of Christ, this Jesus, this, this Messiah. And this is a wonderful thing. And then verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the darkness, uh, and gross darkness to people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. See, people will see the light shining in you. Uh, back in the year 2000, I was in Turkey, and uh, another person and I were walking down the road, and we were praying, and this man came the other way, and just stopped us, and he says, uh, uh, you're a Christian. He pointed at me, and he said that. And I said, yes, I am, but how do you know that? He says, you have the same light my wife does, and she's a Christian. And I said, well, praise the Lord, and how about you? And he said, oh, no. And he mentioned another denomination that he was, but he was seeing the light, you see. He didn't just see me as a person. He saw the light of Christ. God was letting him see the light. Because back in the year when we were there, you couldn't have any meetings. You could only walk and pray. Praise God. Some people just need to see you walking and praying. Some people just need to see the glory of God that's in you, the light that's in you. And see, back in Isaiah 16, 1, he says, Arise, shine. Don't let the circumstances of this virus and and the circumstances of maybe being out of work right now, uh, don't, don't let that weigh down on you. You just cast all of that on the Lord because he cares for you. And, and you, just, you just take these three scriptures that I gave you, these three pieces of scripture. You think about them. And you just say, I'm going to rise. I'm going to shine. And the Lord's going to work with me. He's going to deliver me from the powers of darkness. Because darkness cannot have us. Darkness cannot override us. Darkness cannot be in our lives. And then Isaiah 60, verse 3, And the Gentiles shall come to your light. So there's people who will come to your light. He didn't say Israel. He didn't say the Jews. But he said the Gentiles. He's called us in in the book of Acts. And he's called the Gentile nations in in the book of Acts. And, and he's still calling, still calling. And there's many of them out there that need to see the Jesus that's in you, the light that's in you. So you go forward with this, and, and you start believing this, and you ask God just to temper me and let this light shine in me, let this glory be seen upon me. And uh, you just uphold me and strengthen me through this whole process right now. And remember Isaiah, uh, I'm sorry, Psalm uh, 91, verse 10. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. And in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, the Lord said, because you have been willing to wait on him, that he will not let you go through the shaking that's upon this earth. 
you keep walking in this light because he is in the light. And uh, you let him have the time that he needs in your life. And it's time now for you to be able to separate yourself unto him. And just pray an hour a day and seek him and let your light shine. And uh, we, we don't want to hear, we don't want to hear from the Lord or from anybody else uh, that you're good for nothing. You know, you, you haven't gotten this light to waste it. You've got this light to shine it. You be a shine today. God bless you.